Hello familia, welcome to another YouTube video. I'm here camouflaging with the walls. Let me just show you. Basically, you can't see me anymore. Basically, this video is going to be about how to get an hourglass figure, how to get a small waist and a big bum, or how to get that curvy look, hourglass look. But I think as well, in order to continue this video there is one thing that you need to do and I think you already know like and subscribe if you're new if you're already subscribed I absolutely adore you you're my favorite person in the world and um, what you need to do just to top it up like the cherry on top is to like it as well and then I like we can basically become best friends after this if you do this already so <laughs> just saying um, so first thing I want you to know is that genetics plays a huge role. When I speak about something, especially something like this, I'm always going to be honest with you. For me, yeah, I'm always here to, I don't know, if you watch, if you watch my videos for a long time and if you know me from my, uh, if you know a little bit my personality from Instagram and obviously YouTube, if you watch my videos before, you know that I like to educate you and to inspire you and to help you as much as I can um, with understanding what exercise you can do to become, a, to become stronger, to become more comfortable with your body. But if there is one thing that I will never do is to give false hopes to people or to lie about a certain product that you should be using, I don't know, bloody waist trainers to get an hourglass shape or to drink some like stupid teas or anything like that. I will never lie. I've been offered, like, let me just tell you, I've been offered a lot of money to sponsor things like that. But for me, I rather not have a certain amount of money than lie to people, to my people. I've always been honest. I'm here to really educate you and to let you know the truth about fitness and what you can do and what you can achieve and what you can't. And when it comes to fitness, getting that hourglass shape, you need to know that genetic plays a huge role, okay? There are three body types. We've got the ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. Um, so for example, someone was mesomorph, um, they particularly tend to carry naturally um, a lot of muscle mass, and it's, hard, and it's so much easier for them to build that muscle mass. So someone that is ectomorph is naturally and genetically slender, so much thinner. That means they'll be better at activities such as running, and um, they're very fast in general so these are the main qualities so every single body type and every single human body will be characterized by specific qualities and strengths and also appearances okay so you can't ask for example someone who's naturally slender and it's got a body and a skeleton we're talking about bones here okay Someone that's got a genetically slender figure, so naturally very thin and really struggles to put on weight, for example, um, etc., will really struggle to build an hourglass figure. Why? It doesn't mean that you can build a booty, that is completely wrong. This video is about building the hourglass figure, okay? It doesn't mean that you can gain a booty, it's just that the body shape of that person is not genetically made to look this way, okay? It's genetically made to look this way. Unfortunately, with social media now, nowadays, there is one body type that's been preferred over others. But um, I was thinking about this for a while and isn't it so crazy? And I want you to really think and to stop and think about this, how this body type, if you had put this body type years ago that wouldn't have been seen as sexy what was sexy in the 90s was actually the slender all the other people that had a very curvy figure used to feel awful about themselves because they wanted to look slender but now because of the generations and new media and they've thrown this fake new figure that is what we should all look like right years and years ago talking about in the media, medieval times the perfect body type was actually someone who was chubby that carried a lot of weight it was a sign of 
um, wealth. Um, it meant that they were well off. Um, they were doing well with themselves. Um, sign of the nobles. Um, so that was the best body type. That was the Victorian age. We had the corset type. So literally, um, women were made to wear these crazy corsets, almost crushing their bones. Um, but what I want you to understand is throughout history, there have been so many different body types and body standards, okay? And it's been changing so much generation after generation. It's crazy, it just literally baffles me. Um, I know that I'm gonna get to your tips at the end. Um, I just wanna make sure that I'm telling you all this because I just wanted to really understand that there is nothing wrong with, your, with you, okay? It's perfectly fine to have your own genetics, to you have your own body shape, and it's so hard nowadays because we compare ourselves so much. It's a bit he easier for me to keep my waist really small, um, that's me not flexing, um, whereas for someone else, it might be harder. Now, I'm not saying that you cannot get your, your waist, you cannot have a flat belly. I'm not saying that you cannot build your glutes. I'm talking about frames here, body frames, okay? Hip dips are also a part of genetics. I have hip dips, like, like can we just, um, like, can we just see here? There is like little dents that go around. You see, I also have the hip dips. Now, let's separate the two things, okay? From someone having a curvy hourglass shape to glutes, okay? Someone can have hip dips like me, but you can build a bum from behind, okay? Muscles can be grown. But of course, there are some people that have to sweat hard to build them. And they have to work harder than others. But that's why I always say, even to my clients, please stop comparing yourself to other people. You should be your own competition. You can become better than what you were yesterday. But if you keep comparing yourself to people that have got completely different genetics to you, whatever you do, whatever all your efforts that you put in, you'll never be good enough. So why don't you compare yourself to past pictures of you instead and see how much you've improved? And I'm sure that if you focus more on you, you'll start appreciating your efforts a lot more. And there are some people that, that can grow them so so quickly in like a space of like a few months a couple of weeks there are some, some of the people like myself for example um, I maybe yes I have I, like a small waist but in terms of my glutes I had to work damn hard for them and it took me six years to get to here to how I look now okay you see how I look now? It took me six years. Some of the people might, might be able to achieve this in less time or maybe longer. But I know, that's that I know some people that look, that their glutes look amazing just by doing lightweight exercises. And I'm like, wow, that's when genetics plays a huge role. And there are some people like me that I have to bloody lift heavy every single week. I bloody kill my glutes every single time I train. I train so bloody hard. Sometimes I feel like I'm throwing up or I'm, sometimes I feel sick, okay? And there's some people that just, that are there, they just do a couple of squats and like, you know, and they just look amazing. Same thing with like gaining weight. Some people might be like, for example, gaining weight very easily on my, around their stomach. For me, it's a little bit harder, for example. It's fitness. It's not about following a certain beauty standard. And that's why I'm talking about this today. I hope you don't think that this is clip bait or anything because it's not. I'm here to be honest and to put in front of you what you can achieve. And if you are, let, let me just show you something as well. One second. Right, you're gonna think that's so weird, but let me just show you. I actually purposely went to um, the shop to buy these two pieces of fruit. So look at this apple. This is an apple, and obviously we know that this is a pear. Duh, Dora the Explorer coming back again, right? But 
Let's say now that the apple looks at the pear and says, wow, I love its shape, okay? Right, let me get closer as well. I wish it looked like her, but the apple is completely different from the chair. It's still a fruit, but it's just completely different. Still delicious, but it's completely different from a pear. So asking an apple to look like a pear is really unfair because the apple will never look like a pear and the pear will never look like an apple. It's the same thing as body types. Someone that's got a specific body type, asking them to look like Kim Kardashian is so unfair just because it's genetically not possible. But it doesn't mean that that person is less worthy than Kim Kardashian or someone that's got that body shape. No. The, the apple is still beautiful, it's still delicious as it is. And if you nurture it, you train your body, you eat well, you feed it with a nice, um, you plant it, <laughs> obviously talking an apple, in terms of the apple size, but if you plant it in the right soil, if you water it with the right thing, with the, with the water it enough, it will grow perfectly delicious, okay? And same as the pear. It doesn't mean that the pear, and also in terms of preferences as well, some people prefer apples more and others prefer pears, but it doesn't mean that an apple is less worthy just because someone might prefer a pear and vice versa, okay? We're all worthy. Both the apple and the pear, both delicious fruits, and there will be people that will appreciate those, okay? Um, and I want you to think the same thing about your body shape. You can still grow your muscles. You can still focus on what your body can do, which is amazing. If you'd no idea how much more you can achieve by training. That's why I'm such a big advocate of fitness. I'm an advocate of fitness, of developing your body, your body to the best version of your own self, not of the best. We cannot keep comparing ourselves to different categories. They're different, okay? But you can become the best version of yourself for sure by training, nurturing yourself, feeding yourself with the right foods, the right type of foods, and you can become the best apple in your category. And the same thing as a pear. It's simply how it is. Um, but you can't ask an apple again to look like a pear because it's not fair. Hopefully um, you didn't find this, hopefully you didn't find this cringy and I'm sorry if I took so much time to kind of explain something to you but I feel like it's so important to send this message out there because I used to actually, believe it or not, I used to compare myself to a friend of mine, she's got an amazing shape and I always used to like think, wow I wish I looked like her, like, but <laughs> listen, I'm training hard for me. I'm doing anything I can to become the best version of, you, of myself. If someone has got different genetics, it's not fair to compare yourself to that other person because that person has completely, a completely different DNA, body composition, bones, everything. It's a topic that really touches me because I used to be so insecure about myself. There was a time I was at my lowest and I used to think that I wasn't worthy even of being here. Um, because all I was doing was trying to look like other people and that's what led to my eating disorder in the past. Sorry for the change of background, literally um, someone started a class at the gym so I was like, um, let me just move everything that was in my tripod again. <laughs> anyway, so I was talking about um, the body differences, the different body types, but I was telling you that you can achieve no matter what, you can achieve the best version of yourself. You can still grow amazing glutes for yourself, but stop comparing yourself to other people. Start striving for a particular thing. It's good to have goals in mind, which is absolutely great. This is what you sh should push you. And I have helped a lot of different girls um, achieve the best versions of themselves, okay? So I'll just put a couple of examples here in the video just to let you, um, to let you see. But um, now on to like a few tips that can really help you become the best version of yourself instead. Um, this is something that I always talk about, guys. 
food and nutrition. That is what you feed your body is the most important thing you could ever do. And let me tell you something, it's more important than training itself, okay? In terms of your nutrition, you need to know what food you're eating for your body, okay? For your goal as well, okay? If you want to lose weight, you need to be on a calorie deficit. If you want to be on a surplus, if you want to gain weight and just gain weight, you don't need to lose any weight, you need to be on a surplus. If you want to do both at the same time, you need to be on a maintenance. Now, whether you want to be on a maintenance or any of these goals, you need to really sit down and just really understand how much fat, how much weight you need to lose. If it's a lot, it's worth going through that deficit path first. That's what I recommend. If you don't know what you're doing, I'm happy to help you and the description and I'll link the link to my online coaching plan to in my description because you need someone that helps you one-to-one -one as well. If you don't know what you're doing and just following random exercises from all over the place, you're not gonna get where you want and that's simply what it is. Even if it's not myself that you want to be coached by, just get someone that can tell you what you're doing because otherwise if you just go to the gym for the sake of it without knowing what you're doing, what exercise, with no order, with no plan, then you're just wasting your time pretty much. So tips for you there. Make sure you eat according to your goal. Download my fitness pal because that will help you understand and track your calories. And I know that tracking your calories can be a ball ache. I'm doing it at the moment and I cannot be bothered. I always have to go and track everything. But it is necessary to achieve a determined goal. You have to put in the work if you want to be the best version of yourself. You have to take care of yourself as well and put the time and the effort and be, and be accountable be responsible for it like you have to take control and own it um, and then obviously like training progressive overload and we know this guys don't we so you want to make sure that you keep pushing for your PBs and um, you get stronger over time you select a couple of exercises and um, that will grow your glutes the best exercise I've done loads of um, walk through on my YouTube and um, if you watch my previous videos about what to even my full leg day, you'll know what I normally do, but essentially it's always about yourself, understanding what works more for you, and which is very important. Um, a couple of things as well. Obviously in terms of, we said that genetic plays a massive role when it comes to training, okay? However, there are some exercises that can be preferred um, to hit that kind of side, top area of your glutes, okay? Right, right here which will kind of help you with that figure, but again, it won't really make that much of a difference, but it can help somehow, okay? So there are some exercises that you can do to target the top area of your glutes. These are, guys, ladies and gentlemen, my lovely thigh hydrants. Again, we will demonstrate how I do them. Um, these are isolation exercises as well, so they need to be additional to your normal compound like squats, deadlifts, etc. So these will be lightweight exercises. You don't have to go heavy. Okay, so fire hydrants, we know them, how they work, anything like this, okay. Monster walk, really good. I usually do that also in between my compound. So I will do a squat and then I'll do a monster walk with my lovely band. Let me just grab it for you. Put it just above your knees, okay? Just nice and simple, monster walk. And with this, in order to feel it, you need to do a lot of reps, okay? So I'm talking here between 30 to 50 reps, okay? Anything abduction related, so on the cables, for example, hip abduction on the cable is also very good. But again, guys, if you want help with that, link in the description below and I can coach you directly one to one. I really hope that you found this video useful and it somehow it helped you. I don't want you to think that it was like clickbait or anything. I'm here to be honest with you. And there is so much misinformation on online about fitness and how to get rid of love handles. BS, sorry, BS. You can't get rid of all of love handles by doing some weird exercises. Any sort of unwanted fat can only be um, be eliminated with your diet, not with exercise. Add exercises to lose tummy fat, tummy fat. Please don't even get me started, no.
There is so much misinformation about the fitness world and so many things like people selling skinny tees, um, what's it called, waist trainers and all these like BS, honestly BS, absolutely BS. Um, that I hear about all the time, fat burners and whatnot. I really hope that this kind of opens your eyes a little bit and really inspires you to train and be healthy for yourself and to really be curious and um, if you push yourself, what, how you can look like. Because I had no idea that I could have looked like that. I had no idea I could one day be able to lift over 200 kilos when I was that skinny. I had no idea, but if you don't start, if you don't try, and if you don't really do it because you love yourself and because you deserve to do this and to achieve the best version of yourself, then you'll never know. But I really hope this video helped, and thank you so, so much for watching, and hopefully I will see you next time very soon.